Hey, this is Father James Misco coming back at you with Coffee with the Collars, and I'm here with our parochial vicar. Father Doug Jeffers. Padre, good morning. Good morning, Father James. So uh, here we are just five days away now That's from right. the celebration of Lent. Nice. You know, it's so <clears throat> odd. Lent is one of my favorite times of the year, and it's just so counterintuitive. But I don't know. To me, it's just this buildup of drama that leads to the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord. It's just a, it's a beautiful time of the year. And, and of course, as we know, we celebrate on Ash Wednesday the imposition of ashes. Mm -hmm. So, Father, uh, what do they teach you at the seminary about the imposition of ashes? Well, the, the ashes are an ancient symbol going deep back into the Old Testament of repentance and humility. So ashes are, you know, they're dirty and they're on the ground. And to take ashes and put them on your head is a sign of humbling yourself in the sight of God to ask him for pardon and for mercy. So I think that's, that's uh, maybe part of the attraction of Ash Wednesday. You, you know, everybody comes out for it, which might seem counterintuitive because it's a, a sad day and a day of repentance, but it's also a hopeful day because it's, it's a, a day of new energy and new beginnings and uh, thinking, well, there are, there are things in my life that I'm not doing well, but I'm gonna turn again toward the Lord today and make a new beginning. To me, Ash Wednesday is one of the most beautiful uh, liturgies in all of the liturgical year. Mm -hmm. You know what one of the most ironic things about Ash Wednesday is? That? Is that it is not a holy day of obligation. That's true. And yet it's arguably the most attended day <clears throat> in all really of the church year. They want their ashes. They sure do. Yeah, one of the things that I think about on Ash Wednesday, uh, to me it's so profound that uh, on Ash Wednesday everyone is somehow equalized. Uh, yeah. Everybody comes up to get their ashes, whether they're a millionaire, or whether they're a, a homeless person, yeah. whether they have five degrees from university or whether they went to school through the second grade, mm -hmm. whether they're old or whether they're young, uh, whether they are a Catholic or whether they're not Catholic, quite yeah. frankly. Um, Ash Wednesday is the day that puts everybody on a level playing field. Mm -hmm. We are all destined to die and we are all uh, needing to be made aware of that. And this is the sort of the jarring reality of the beginning of Lent. So for me, it's a very profound time. <laughs> Another thing that I love about Ash Wednesday is that um, there's a piece of music that our choir will oh, sing. Yeah. Will it's sing? called the Miserere. Oh. And, uh, and it is by Allegri. Uh, Allegri. Mm -hmm. And we, do you know the story of this piece of music? I do, yeah. All right, let's see if you know the story. Tell me the story. <laughs> no, I'm on the spot. I'm going to put you on the no. spot. Well, I know the story about it being... Uh, uh, See, as I recall, the, uh, the piece was really kept under kind of lock and key because it was only really supposed to be sung in the Sistine Chapel and they didn't let the music be copied until uh, a young Mozart, he was like a little boy, right? Um, when Mozart was in that chapel and heard it sung and just memorized it and uh, transcribed it, wrote down the music after he heard it and then... From there, the piece kind of went out into yeah. the world. Unbelievable, isn't it? Okay. So, like, he heard the music, and he was a genius, of course, and he was just immediately went back to Salzburg, wrote down what he heard, and then, of course, uh, there was no need for lock and key anymore at that point in the game. Everybody could hear the Miserere by Allegri. Uh, so, our choir sings the Miserere. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece of music. Yeah. Um, it just kind of kind of tugs at your heartstrings because it's a very dramatic melody. Yeah. So, um, we're super uh, excited about Ash Wednesday coming up. And uh, we know that you are too, and so we look forward to seeing you uh, and uh, together. Uh, let's think about these things, uh, the ashes. Uh, let's think about penance. Let's think about placing ourselves humbly in the presence of God. Uh, and of course, uh, you got five days to have treats. Oh, that's and right. so for our Coffee with the Collars, one of our parishioners, Jolly John, she made these uh, lemon tarts for us, oh, Padre. Excellent. Uh, excellent. They look quite good. They do. They uh, do. You will not be having these uh, next Friday that's on Coffee right. with that's the Collars. Right. We'll be no. having uh, burnt toast oh, okay. next Friday. Like so uh, enjoy uh, your last weekend before Ash Wednesday and have a great Friday.